Just so you know, this tier list is going to cover the pacifist route, so this is just going to assume the pacifist route is the canon one, and I'm going to be basing the characters on that. I'll probably be doing videos of other routes going forward. Clover. Clover is the best and worst of silent protagonists. Even if he never speaks, he still just has a lot of love to give, especially in the ending. Goes out of his way to help all these monster folk that he's never even met before this. Gives jaded characters a whole new lease on life. Class Classic anime stuff. Despite the flaws of being a silent protagonist, um, I think he deserves an A. I liked this guy. A lot of people struggled on his boss fight, and the notes aren't necessarily hard to hit, I don't think, but on Pacifist, when you only have 20 health the entire time, you only need to mess up like three or four times to die, so it's his battle can be frustrating, but from a character perspective, um, I didn't really find much to latch onto here. He's just kind of a wacky, ridiculous character, but the boss fight was okay, so just as a character, I'll give him a C. Dalve. Dalve is a great introduction to this world. He kind of disappears in the mid game and only shows up again in the post credits scene. But the, the interactions with him in the beginning are great. You can get some just really, really sweet dialogue. If you had any concerns that this wasn't going to match Toby Fox's style, Dalv's dialogue was pr probably your introduction into challenging that that, pre that presumption. He's got a cute design. He's a cute dude. I love his boss battle and that, that music, that, that theme is just so good. So so even if he disappears from the middle of the game a lot, I think I'm going to put him in S tier. Ed, uh, one of the Feasty Five. Kind of, the Feasty Five, the attention is obviously divided amongst them. None of them probably get as much attention as other characters on this tier list would. But it was really cool to see them come together in that boss rush style fight where they would swap out and then take turns and come in at the same time. Uh, Ed in particular, I, I like the moment where he grabs Clover and the squeaky noise happens. Uh, I don't think much of them get a ton of growth, but just as a fun little character, as a fun part of a fun boss fight, I think he's earned a, uh, a B spot. Martlet. Oh man, I, I, I really do love Martlet. I think she's the classic Undertale character. I think I could easily, you know, I've said this in a lot of my videos about fan content, but when something can easily be mistaken for cut content from the base game, I think it's worthy of praise. Martlet does strike me as something that could just be plucked straight from Toby Fox's mind. I love how she's constantly trying to put aside her people-pleasing demeanor to be this harsh, strict guard type figure. She is kind of useless in one of the final confrontations in the pacifist route, but I'll let it slide. I think she deserves an A. Uh, male Undyne? He's, uh, he's pretty cool. I like the I like the, the fencing sword. I like the different attack patterns he has, the way he collaborates with others. He even has a little bit of dialogue where he hints that him and Undyne look alike, which I think is a cute nod to the main game. Like the other member of the Feasty Five, I think I'm going to put him in B tier. I know next to nothing about this guy other than the fact that I love him. Like, look at how he stumbles onto his fight scene. How could you not just immediately put this guy higher on a tier list? Just that is, if I ask chat if i asked chat gpt to generate something that's hard not to love it would probably just give me this character ace is like a humanoid version of the incognito mode in a browser i like his kind i like his design it it has an edge to it but he still has an undertale charm especially with how goofy the other members of the feasty five are it's nice to have someone who's a little bit more edgy but he didn't really grab me like the other two members of the feasty five that we've ranked so far on this tier list did so i think i'm gonna put him in c soroba okay so soroba i I think she's a good character. I think she's I think she's cute. I like a lot of stuff about her, even her boss fight. I do. I think she's a very competently written character. Some of her flashbacks are very tragic and well written. I do think the plot kind of just becomes about her too quickly, especially in the pacifist route. I think the story would have benefited from a more gradual leaning into her arc. I did like her being kind of a calm figure in the middle of the Wild West area when everyone in the Feasty Five is just kind of bothering you. She's like a nice calm contrast to those characters. But overall, very well-written character, uh, even if the pacing is a bit on the on the shoddy side. Let me go ahead and just put this. I'm going to put her in B. Starlo. I really like what they did here. Uh, Starlo is the leader of the Feasty Five, and they're kind of all just playing pretend to cope with the fact that they're stuck in the underworld. It has a nice bittersweet echo to it, his, his whole plot. I especially like his outburst towards the end of his arc 
where he alienates himself from the other members and he comes off as spoiled and insecure. His hidden nerdy side where he takes off his hat and looks ridiculous. I think what sells me ultimately though is his boss fight where he tethers you to the center of your dodge box and you have to deliberately get him to attack it so that you can fight back. It's all really good. I think the developers were firing on all fronts when they made Starlo. Definitely earns his place in S tier. No one showed up in D tier, so I guess that's indicative of something. Either way, let me know if you'd like to see more Undertale yellow themed tier lists in the future. I'll probably be doing a video on the flawed pacifist run before long, so be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. <laughs>